1986 was the epicenter of big hair, and my sister Kelly was the living, breathing, beating heart of the frizzy-haired earthquake. I used to think you could trap a gerbil in her bangs. God, you are immature, Lewis. Bite me. Ah, uh, stop it. I'm going to get cancer. <laughs> One of the conditions of being 13 is that you're constantly lying. I hadn't told the truth about anything in three months. <laughs> there was this girl, Carolyn Moore, the hottest girl in the eighth grade gifted and talented class. <laughs> okay, she was the only hot girl in the eighth grade, but I loved her. Ah, oh, puberty. That glorious time in our lives when we become young women and men. Let's be real, it's a pain. <laughs> and in 1986, Lewis is on its hormonal roller coaster, dealing with his big haired sister, insane grandmother, and his parents' crumbling marriage. Lewis is determined to find the silver lining of his young, pubescent life. His, his first, first kiss. kiss. A tiny miracle with a fiber optic unicorn. By Don Zalewis. <laughs> At this point in time, I didn't know if my parents weren't getting along. I just thought, that's how adults behaved when they loved each other. <laughs> I used to dream about the amazing shouting matches I would have with Carolyn after our inevitable marriage. What are you doing, George? I'm, uh, cleaning the television. The Packer game better not be on. What? That was a pass interference. Where's the instant replay? You're not going to live long if you don't mop the kitchen. Well, where's the mop bucket? Where it's been for the last 15 years. <laughs> Carolyn was going to be Mary in our church nativity place, so naturally I wanted to be Joseph. Okay, um, Lewis, you're going to be an ass. What? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. That's what they're called. Okay, get used to it. You live in the manger with all the other animals. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I be Joseph? No, you're an ass. All right, people, let's get to work. Hey, hey, Micah, are you an idiot? The wise men do not do that. Uh. Hey, Lewis. Uh, hi, hi, Carolyn. Sucks that you're an ass. Okay, I've got... Less lines, you know. What does a donkey do? They bray like brain. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, I should go work on my lines. Hey, um, I got you a Christmas present. Really? That's so sweet. But I, I don't have an Omni. Maybe I could um give it to you sometime. Okay. See ya. Of course, I didn't have a present for Carolyn. <laughs> I had five days to get it. Hey, can you take me to the mall tomorrow? I told Carolyn Warren I'd get her a present. No. Look, I have an image, okay? I go to the mall to be seen. And the last thing I need is my darky brother trailing me around. I'll tell Mom what happened to that bottle of Jack Daniels. Oh. <laughs> All right, but we're going to be on separate ends. I'm going to hug you at the mall tomorrow. <laughs> I'll need the Brookfield Mall was a center of social activity from kids ages 10 to 17. But my plan hit a serious road bump. We <laughs> should have parked in the handicap spot. Where are you going, Grandma? To a bar. <laughs> there were three reasons why we didn't want to take Grandma Jacobs to the mall with us. One, she was insane. <laughs> Two, there were stuffed snakes at KB Toy that she mistake for rattlers. And three, she was insane. I, I don't think there's a bar at this mall, Grandma. Well, what the heck kind of mall is this? Besides, I need to get a present for a girl. Ooh, a girl. Good. That'll put your family's mind at ease. About what, Grandma? I'll explain it to you when I'm drunk sometime. <laughs> After two hours, the Brookfield Mall held a fierce death grip on my soul. For $11, you could buy the smallest diamond pendant visible to the naked eye or a t-shirt with a cat on it. <laughs>
But then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw it. What every girl wanted. A fiber optic unicorn figurine. It flashed red, then green, then blue, then purple, etc. Always changing. She had kissed me on the spot. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. Um, my house was going into hour six of the Trivial Pursuit death march, so I thought I'd come over. We snuck off into the basement. The finished part consisted of one room, a dusty old television, and a couch that had recently been peed on by a one-eyed cat with leukemia. <laughs> this is nice. Really? No, but at least my brother's not here. Another facet of the basement was that there was a vent that led directly up to the kitchen, and you could basically hear every word said up there. <coughs> and as I was sitting there with the love of my life, this is what we heard. I don't want to live like this. So, that's it then. What do you mean that's it then? Well, you won't tell me what's going on. If you had half a brain, you would know. This conversation is making, making my brain hurt. You don't take anything seriously. This is like a big joke to you. I'm sorry I'm funny. You're not funny. You think you're funny. All during dinner you're making snarks or sarcastic comments. To me. To the kids. To my mom. She got Lewis a one-eyed cat for Christmas. How can you not make a joke about that? <laughs> my sense of humor is part of me. It's who you married. But you don't enjoy me anymore. I don't enjoy you? You're standing here saying I don't enjoy you? When was the last time you touched me? I'm talking a hug, a shoulder rub, holding hands, anything. Do you know? It's been 27 days. You know why I know that? I decided to do this little experiment where I would just not touch you and see how long it took before you noticed. The first day, it was so weird. And I remember that night, uh, lying in bed, crying because you hadn't noticed at all. So the next day, I decided to do the experiment again. And I went the whole day and then the next day, and then the next day, and then the next day. And it got a little easier each day. And I kept thinking, he's going to notice. He's going to notice it tonight. And you never did. For four weeks, you never noticed. So when I say I can't live like this, and you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, that's like you're pulling out my heart. Why are we even doing this anymore? Why don't you stop pretending that you love me? It's okay. When I was 11, my mom moved out. I remember being in my room and I just lay there and cried. I remember being just face down crying, wondering why no one was coming to see if I was okay. Thanks. Hey, I got you a Christmas present. Really? That's so sweet. It's a fiber optic unicorn. It glows different colors and stuff. I saw it and I thought of you. <laughs> you don't like it. I never said I didn't like it. No, it's a stupid unicorn. What were you ever going to do with that? I should have been shot with my mom's stun gun. <laughs> Your mom has a stun gun? Yeah, it was a present from my grandma. <laughs> Your family's 
beard. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I like beard. I have something that'll cheer you up. <laughs> I remember shaking all over and being scared I was gonna screw it up or I was gonna wake up. Or she was gonna pull away and say, just kidding, I hate you. <laughs> and I remember keeping my eyes open the entire time, because I figured if I kept them open the entire time, I could make for absolute certain that this was actually happening. And that was my first kiss. And maybe you can only experience that feeling once in your life, but boy, what I wouldn't do to have that feeling again. 